get a burn. Can you get a fan? Does this building have AC? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> it does, but just not using it? Not using it today? Well, it's strictly weather. You don't know whether you're heating it or cooling it. Yeah. That's what happens in my office all the time. They've got just a hot water heat system. And they turn it. Just flip it around. Yeah, so once you shut it off. On days like this, when they got to like blow cold, the cooler air from the outside in. And we have not heard from anyone not attending, so hopefully. All right, we'll call the uh, April 17th, 2023 Pontiac Zoning Board of Appeals meeting to order. Can we get a roll call, please? Anderson? Here. Burke? Here. Kirkendorf? Here. Bavacqua? Here. Bueno? Here. McClellan? Here. May? Okay. We have one absence this evening, so six total members. All right, next item on the agenda, official communications. Do we have any? There are no official communications this evening. All right, uh, next item is adoption of minutes and seeing that there were no minutes in the packet and uh, there are none here, um, I suggest we address that next meeting absolutely so we did receive April's meeting minutes I think today um, and so we will have that for you next month just to get you enough time to review them sorry right. thank you do we have any old business 
Uh, we have no old business this evening. All right, on to new business. So there is one uh, use variance case that we have this evening, and Justin Curry from our staff will be given the presentation. Good evening, all. Again, my name is Justin Curry, one of the planners here. Uh, staff would like to first acknowledge all mothers. Um, happy belated Mother's Day to everyone. Um, moving forward here, I will be facilitating the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting dated May, May 15th, excuse me, 2023. We start here with the variant ZBA 23-011 for applicant Maurice Bobo on behalf of the Macedonia Baptist Church located at the following address, 512 Purcell, Parcel ID, 19-05-280-031, and the request happens to center around the installation of the fence in an R1A zoning district. The applicant is seeking variance to allow recently uh, constructed fence or accessory structure to be permitted without a principal structure. As noted here, the church recently had the lot surveyed and a contractor uh, happened to construct the fence solely on one side, uh, the east side specifically in a lot, uh, which is adjacent here to the property, which we will see in a later slide. Uh, the fence is located on the eastern property lot uh, and comprised of an aluminum chain link fence, which is about four feet tall. Uh, the fence was installed to prevent any potential uh, infiltration here from the neighboring homeowner. And as you can see here, the images of the property from Parcel, uh, the fence here as mentioned in the previous slide and noted here the property uh, of the neighbor is adjacent to the fence. In this slide here, we happen to have the site and zoning district. Get my handy dandy pointer. So I can Second here, technical difficulties. Oh, here See we it? go. Got it. All right. Thank you for your patience, everyone. Um, so we happen to have the site and zoning district here. As you can see, this area here is the parcel that we happen to have. And the thick blue line here represents the fence. And as noted here previously, is the property here adjacent to the fence. Macedonia is located right here. Okay, so as you can note here, we happen to have the R1 zoning district. As you can see in this area and this area, R1A is in this area here. And we happen to have the background information here. Uh, the city has received frequent requests to fence in undeveloped lots. Uh, while some owners have been able to combine their lots with a lot that is a principal structure to allow a fence, a variance is required if there is not a principal structure. The subject property, again, is zoned as an R1A. And we happen to have the standards of approval here, citing the strict compliance with C1 fence regulations, creating a reasonable hardship for the applicant's use of the site. Granting of this variance will do justice to the applicant by allowing them to use their property without trespassing. The justification for the fence appears to be related to the applicant's intended use of the parcel rather than any inherent qualities of the property. The problem is not self-created. The spirit of this ordinance will be observed, public safety and welfare secured, and substantial justice done. Uh, the last two here, as you can see, happen to be in the uh, accordance here of the zoning code, section 6.401-B to be exact, and 6.303, special exception and jurisdiction powers and duties variances. 
Uh, in summary, the fence is not required for reasonably use of the property. The applicant is requesting a variance to allow for a fence without a primary structure. While the applicant is requesting the fence for safety, there are not unique circumstances peculiar to the property compared to others. The request for special exception permit approval must meet the following general standards. All dimensions for private drives, streets, or roadways, including the length of dead end drives, shall meet the municipal standard requirements, arrangements satisfactory to the city regarding the maintenance and repair streets, roadways, or access drives. In summary here, if the ZBA feels that the applicant's request meets the standards of approval, they may consider approval of the variance. If the ZBA does not feel the applicant's request meets the standards of approval, they may consider denial of the variance. Uh, staff would like to humbly remind the ZBA that we do not provide a formal recommendation of the variance. And we happen to have all three motions here. I'm not going to go on in depth here for each one, but I will leave these here as a point of reference for your personal reference. Any questions? So if I can add on to this, Justin, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, in a, an amendment to your packet has been filed, and I do want to provide some context. So originally, when the um, church has applied for this variance, it was a dimensional variance, which you typically see with fences. Uh, but in talking with our uh, legal team um, through the process, we determined that this is actually a use variance because a fence is an accessory structure, and those are only permitted when there's a principal structure. So um, in reply to that, the uh, council for the church has provided this amendment, um, which the because the standards for a use variance are slightly different than a dimensional variance. So I wanted to give uh, both the applicant an opportunity to address, but I wanted to point that out to you, uh, which, which is a unique uh, request in this, in this right. So um, if that, that's all the questions or all the points I have, and let us know if you have any questions. Uh, would the applicant like to speak? Yes. Please do. Hey, Justin, turn the mic on. Good evening, and thank you very much for your time. My name is Earlene Baggett Hayes. I am legal counsel um, here in the city of Pontiac, here this evening to represent the Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, uh, its board of trustees, and certainly is its par parishioners. Um, there's information in the packet about the church, and I won't go into any detail except to say that it's a longstanding existing church and it's been there for over 100 years. Um, I, I guess I'd like to begin by, I don't know if the city is prepared to refer back to any of the information that's already been presented, but I would like to uh, make a um, correction. If you could refer back to the, um, the schemata of the fence as it relates to Pearson Avenue, yes. On that schematic, there is a blue line, and I think the representation was that that fence goes out to Pearson Street. That fence does not go out to Pearson Street. It stops at the sidewalk. In fact, it stops 15 feet, 10 to 15 feet from the sidewalk. So the fence itself has a tremendous setback. Um, so as not to disturb the um, use of either the neighboring property or the um, use by the petitioners. Again, that fence extends about 10 to 15 feet short of the sidewalk. It certainly doesn't represent, isn't represented by the blue area, which demonstrates that it extends to the street. And that was done by the petitioners in an effort to demonstrate to the neighbors that they were not trying to intrude upon or impede anything in their behalf. Um, there is the first photo in your packet supplied by the applicant does highlight uh, what you've just represented. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, that was going to be my yep. next. Uh, to further clarify that, there is a, a picture. Thank you, uh, Mr. Yandrick. So, and Mr. Yandrick said it, and I will be brief, but I did want to mention that 
the petitioners, my clients, began with an instruction to submit a dimensional variance. In my attempt to assist them in making certain that the standards were met, I basically said, well, this doesn't even make sense. We're not even looking for a dimensional variance. So I did go to the city. Uh, Mr. Yandrick indicated that he was advised by legal counsel, but I did have discussion with Mr. Yandrick myself saying, this isn't a dimensional vari variance. So as late as Friday of last week, I received from the city a request, uh, excuse me, an indication that, oh, no, we're not looking for a dimensional variance. We're looking for a use variance. Quite frankly, I have my concerns as to whether the use variance is appropriately being um, utilized here. We're looking for a variance. We like to keep the fence, and I'd like to tell you some reasons why. And I'll get to the standards for a use variance um, briefly. First of all, Chapter 1 of the code is entitled Accessory Structures and Fences. You'll note that the title distinguishes between accessory structures and fences. Section 4.101 addresses accessory structures. Section 4.103 addresses fences. The two are distinguished and they're treated as being mutually exclusive. To further explain, under accessory structures, it does say Accessory structures or buildings may only be constructed on a lot that contains a principal building. No accessory structures or building may be constructed on a lot that does not have a principal building. But that relates to accessory structures. As you go down to 4.103, where it addresses fences or walls, a says residential districts, fences are permitted. Clearly, it says fences are permitted in residential and CO districts as follows. Then it says the front or side street yards, fences are permitted as long as they don't exceed four feet. Well, that's exactly the length of the, of the fence that's been constructed by Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. It says right there, a fence is permitted. It goes on to say, in the rear or interior side yards, the fences um, may not exceed, I think it says in there, six feet. The low fences may be located in any required or non-required yard. Fences may be located. It doesn't say anything about accessory structures, it doesn't say anything about um, principal building when it talks about fences. It talks about fences mutually exclusively. And then it goes on to talk about industrial sites. So all of this addresses fences, which is to be distinguished from accessory structures. I'd like to briefly address something else that was submitted by the city. Um, under the overview, the city says the site is situated along Pearsall Avenue, about a block and a half west of Franklin Road. The applicant is requesting a variance um, pursuant to 4.101A, which is what I just read to you. The city is saying we're seeking a variance with respect to accessory structures. We are not. We're seeking, I don't even know if we're seeking a variance because the fences aren't even deterred or denied or disallowed. But anyway, it says, um, which requires a primary structure before any accessory structure. And then the city has written in here, such as a fence. And I'm wondering where that such as a fence came from because it certainly isn't in the ordinance. It certainly is in the code. I get the impression that this may be something that, and I get it, it may be something that the city has tried to um, uh, not allow to happen for a period of time. We don't want fences around vacant lots. We, and 
I don't know if there's a past practice argument here or what, but the code doesn't say such as a fence. The code distinguishes fences. Um, just to move on, the city says that the city has received frequent prior requests to fence in. Well, the request here is not to fence in. There is one fence, there are four sides to the lot. That's not fencing in. So any argument regarding fencing in doesn't apply to this situation. And again, you may take a look at the um, exhibits that are attached to the petitioner's um, presentation. It's one fence along one side. Now, with respect to, and I'll finish here briefly, with respect to the um, standards, even if use did apply, and, I, and we're still convinced that the use doesn't apply. It doesn't apply because we're not looking for a use variance. We're not looking for a difference in use, and if you read the use variance statute or ordinance, it doesn't even talk about fences. It doesn't even mention or address fences. But in an effort to try to get those standards presented by the city to work, I would indicate that, and the information is there, and certainly um, you can read it for yourselves, but the first one says, in terms of the standards, the, prop <clears throat> the property cannot be reasonably used if the property would be used only for a purpose allowed in the zoning district. Well, the property cannot be reasonably used due to denial of access, neighbors' encroachments, neighbors' claim of ownership, neighbors' illegal entry, general bad faith communications, uh, periodically denying access, so that's why the property can't be used. There's been an ongoing struggle between the church and the neighboring property. There's been an ongoing encroachment. The church needs to use the property. They've been denied access. Tony, who is here, is a grass cutter. He's been denied the opportunity to go in and cut the lot. So that is certainly a huge problem. Although there exists no structures on the property, the church uses it for community and church-related social activities whenever the church sees fit. Additionally, the church the fence establishes a clear line of demarcation so as not to have any further difficulties or miscommunications or misinformation to prevent ongoing issues. And that's why the fence was there. After trying and trying and trying to work it out, the church was unsuccessful. Another standard, the newly erected fence does not change the essential character of the area. So in viewing the area, if you stand on the corner of Motor and Pearsall, you can from that corner look around and see a half dozen four foot aluminum erected fences, all consistent. There are a couple of other fences, some are wooden. I saw one wooden one. I saw one or two wrought iron, but they're all within the four feet, not only in that, on that corner, but throughout the neighborhood. Apparently, the chain link fences were in vogue for a period of time, and people have continued to um, utilize them. And again, the fence does not establish a perimeter for the entire property. A couple of other points here. Um, the request will not be hazardous or disturbing to um, ex existing or future uses in the same general vicinity. The fence will have no effect on the location, no effect on the community. The fence is attractive. It allows owners on each side upkeep of their respective properties. And property lines are there, as you all know, for a reason. The fence avoids spillage. It avoids um, trespass, it encourages activities, and it provides safety during activities. Another standard, 
The request will be served adequately by public facilities and services, i.e. highway streets. There's no, there are no access issues here. There are no um, police or fire protection or drainage issues here. That's why it's so tough to even apply the standards for the use variance. But I'm still looking for something in the code that absolutely says you can't have um, a fence without a public structure. I invite you to look. It's not there. Um, another, another standard or factor, the request does not involve use activities, processes, materials, and equipment or conditions of operation that will be detrimental. No problems, no issues, no safety issues. Another, the request maintains all proposed structures, equipment or materials in a readily accessible manner for police and fire. These are the standards that are set out in the use variants. They're all met here. We had to squeeze them to make them fit but they're all met here. Another, um, the newly erected fence does not hamper ingress or egress for owners on either side, except when the neighbor prevents the church from entering their own property. The fence helps with that process. And I added just a few additional points, and I'll close after these. The request does not create hazardous, disturbing, or injurious issues to other properties in the neighborhood. The fences construction and appearance are consistent with that of other fences in the neighborhood. Again, I won't go into it again, but section 4.1 addresses accessory structures. This is not an accessory structure application. Section 4.103 addresses fences, and it talks about what is required for fences. It talks about what is required. Additionally, the issue is not self-created by the petitioner. The petitioner is trying to avoid the issues, to clean up the issues, to allow for both parties to have peaceful and quiet enjoyment of their respective properties. The fence is recessed, as I said before, approximately 10 to 12 feet from the sidewalk. The fence is solely on um, one side of petitioner's property, as I've also indicated. And I'd like to close by saying that on the side of the neighboring property where there is a building, where the fence is erected, there is even a door to the neighbor's house. So there is no issue with respect to disturbance or um, inability to ingress or egress the property. There is even a, a door on the side of the property. And when the people built the neighbor's home on that property, they knew how close they were putting it to the perimeter line and felt that it was appropriate to put it there. So with that, um, I think I will close, except to say that if the ordinance isn't clear, and I respectfully submit that the ordinance is not clear, in other words, the application of the ordinance is not consistent with what the ordinance says. But in those situations, the ordinance has to be interpreted and viewed in a light most favorable to the petitioner. The city writes the ordinance. The city is responsible for what they write and how they write it. I have nothing further. But thank you very much for your time. So Anyone on the board who has questions for petitioner? Yeah. If, I appreciate the testimony. Um, there's something I do want to read into the record, and that is the definition of accessory structure. This is from section 7.207, and I think it's for the ZBA to consider in tonight's hearing. Anything constructed or erected, the use of which requires permanent location on the ground or attachment to something having a permanent location on the ground, and that is intended to be used in a manner that is clearly incidental, customarily found in connection with, subordinate to, and located on the same lot or parcel as the principal use for which it is exclusively related. So I think while that was not in the memo from staff, uh, the staff report, um, I really think that that was a strong consideration of why that entire section. Um, and going back to the original um, section, it is talking about the general standards for all accessory uses, which is where it says that no accessory structure is permitted where there is not a principal structure. So that was staff's determination in, in, uh, of the code. Are there any questions from the board? I have a 
question, going back to your statement, um, is there any further definition on that? Because I myself would not consider the fence a, a structure. We always treat fences as fences and sheds and garages and anything like that as, as a structure, uh, gazebos, anything like that as, as structure, something building, building like, but not, not fences. Or, and I don't know, I know what you just read, <laughs> but I'm still not convinced that that was considered uh, a structure yeah. per se. Permanently I think fixed to the ground. With walls, roof, or some, you know, yeah. some type of enclosure. But that definition did not talk about the need for walls, or, or it right. talked about something affixed to the ground, and it left it open. And the way it's organized within that section of the code for accessory structures, fences is included as an accessory structure in staff's opinion. Okay. Uh, other thing, the packet you mentioned, you had some um, guidelines, not guidelines, but recommendations. I didn't see any uh, recommendations in the packet. Either the way. There is not a formal staff recommendation on variances. What we provide. I say not recommendation, but uh, motion. A &A or motion. Motions. The motions are up on the screen this evening, if that assists, and, and we can go f okay. back to that if we'd like. Um, I guess the last question would be uh, Chair, I guess it's to what is the issue, I guess, with the applicant, with the neighbor? Well, uh, is about having a public fence. comment, an open public comment for that, to not give them an opportunity to speak. Um, Mr. Weir had public comment. No, we didn't. Oh, public okay. Comment. Yeah. Never mind. I'm, yeah. I'll wait until public comment. Yeah. No, sorry. Yeah. Are any so, other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a definition for a primary structure? Does that mean a house, something that can be lived in? If there is a gazebo, does that qualify as a primary structure than allowing a fence? Well, a gazebo could not be a principal structure in a residential district. A principal structure has to have the approved use. And so this zoning district is R1A, which is single family residential. And there are certain things that are permitted to be there. Um, and R1A is very similar to R1. It's just the lots are a little larger. But a principal structure has to be the approved use for uh, that zoning district or um, something that allows for zoning merits, such as something that's legally non-conforming. But it's the principal use of the building, not necessarily the principal, but the principal structure would be what that contains. So, um, you know, the house is a principal structure on a typical residential lot. A gazebo would not be. So uh, I'd like to... Um, open public comment on this May issue. I just conclude by saying that the um, the, um, the, f the fence does not fence in the property and that nowhere in the code is the fence is, is the fence des described as an accessory nor in the code is the fence described as a structure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll open public comment. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak? Please state your name and address. When you, uh, step up to the mic, please. Um, I'm Tracy Hawk Dingman, and I live at 527 Parasol Avenue. Um, first, let me start by saying I don't know how this ever became an issue um, and why, if the church is such a pillar in the community and an upstanding Thing, why you didn't obtain a permit. Um, I am a reasonable purple person. I've never had a problem with any of my neighbors, including you. No one's ever come to me and talked to me personally. You've talked to my children and harassed them, told them that you owned my home and that we were lucky that you allowed us to live there, which I own my home. I'm sorry. Um, I let it go because I'm the bigger person and I didn't want to make problems. I just said, it'll die down in time. And I thought it had. Um, sorry, I'm getting upset because I did obtain a permit this year. I called the county last year. My neighbors have told me continuously, oh, this church is awful, this church is this, this church is that. I gave you the benefit of the doubt because I am a Christian and I, Take people at face value. 
I maintained the property because I thought it was mine. I called Oakland County last year, found out it wasn't. I wasn't going to do a thing to it this year. I obtained a permit this year to get a privacy fence on my lot, which I have a permit for and I am currently building because I have a granddaughter that I want to fence in for her safety. I don't understand why this is an issue. The fence looks awful, and mind you, it is not on the property line. That driveway, half of it is mine. It needs to be covered, plain and simple. That driveway has got to be gone. I, fence, I put a chain link fence up because people were backing up in there and they were hitting my wall all hours of the day and night. You know, have no idea what that sounds like in the middle of the night. My bedroom is right there. They took out my mailbox this year because they couldn't turn around in the driveway. Yeah, I know it hasn't been fixed yet. I just, I don't know. I'm just upset that it came to this. And I am asking, if you allow the fence to stay, I want the line corrected, and I don't want it to go past my house because it looks awful coming into the front yard. My privacy fence is ending at my house and the front of the house, and there will be a gate there. I don't want it to come beyond there because it does look ridiculous coming past into the front yard. It does, it's just aesthetically not, it does not look good. Um, and I want it corrected because you walk along the side of my house, you can see that you angled the fence to incorporate the driveway. It's obvious. You can walk along my house and it goes from being very narrow to opening up because you've angled the fence from the property line to come to, so that you could use that whole driveway. And I don't like that. You people that you have clearing the brush in the side lot have hit my rock wall at least three times. We've had to cement it so that now if they hit it, they aren't, I'm not losing dirt coming off of my gardens. So that's all I have to say. Any other public comments? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. We'll go to the okay. podium. Oh, go ahead. Hello, my name is Anthony Coney. Um, I've been taking care of the church's property now for numerous of years, numbers of years, before these, our neighbors moved in. Um, this happened to be, I think, around maybe 17, 18. I was told, do not come in their yard no more. I wasn't allowed to come in the yard to cut the church's property. Um, so that's where I think it, where the problem lies. And all I want to do is my job, what I'm paid to do. I have been doing it for, like I said, a number of years prior. So I don't know why I got to this either. And now we're getting, we're getting the property cleaned up. We're getting stuff removed that has been dumped on the area. And again, like I said, I don't know where the problem is. How did it get to this? I'm willing to help. I'm sure the church is willing to help. Talk to our neighbors. That's my comment I wanted to make. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it would be nice if folks just got together and tried to work things out and communicate with each other before coming to City Hall, but that's not always the way it works, unfortunately. Um, sounds like there's a couple parties that might be willing to have a conversation that seem, might be reasonable and, and uh, figure things out. Um, you know, fences can make good neighbors, but they can also cause, cause issues. So um, at this point, we're here now. So um, do any of the board members have questions for anyone who's spoken during public comment? The other comment I had, or question I had, um, well, the issue of the property line, that's fairly simple. 
you have a if you have a registered survey, which you say you did, yes, the applicant should have a registered survey of your property. Compare the two. There's it's pretty that is pretty black and white. So, um, but anyways, uh, my my question was for the applicant. Um, this, this is separate lots away from your church. What is your intent for the property? Parking lot. The use for the property. <laughs> no, it's not a separate lot. Away. It is not a separate lot away from the church. Someone turn their mic off. Just for a second. I thought the church was Kitty Corner, over here in your. Oh, oh, excuse me. Yes, it's it's across the street from the church. I apologize. Yes, yes, it is. But the um, survey was conducted. Um, the church unilaterally paid for the survey. They didn't seek anything from the neighbors. And then they had the fence constructed on the property line. Those, again, again, that issue between the applicant and the neighbor can be readily solved by... Then I would, I, would, I would be seeking to ask the, um, the neighbor if they have a contrary survey with them today that indicates that the fence was not constructed on the property line. And I would also indicate that where the fence ends heading toward the public sidewalk, all of that um, landscape, if you will, the rocks, all of that was undisturbed as it belongs to the neighbor. That was my oh, my only comment, other than to I guess make sure the church, church understands the the use of those residential lots are restricted for the residential use, and I'm not sure it, it's, it's not involved with what we're hearing tonight. But uh, whatever your plans are, if you're going to build homes or whatever you're going to do with it, um, should check with um, planning commission um, before you, you do anything with it. Thank you. That's all. So is it used for, sorry, I'm going to ask you to get back up to the podium. Is the property used for events and gatherings, um, picnics? I mean, what, it, it, is there a use that the church has primarily for that property other than just ownership? Well, f first of all, the church has been hesitant to use the property because of the ongoing issue, and the church certainly isn't looking to exacerbate that. But in the past, the church has used the property for church, religious, and or socially related activities, but not on a regular basis. And I, I know that there's not any concern or complaint about anything inappropriate going on. But yes, the church has used it in the past, but has quite frankly hesitated to try to use it recently because of the ongoing incursions and um, encroachments. Okay. And then uh, uh, a question for uh, the neighbor, um, if you could step up. So you've mentioned that the fence veers off of what you consider to be the property line, and then I heard something about the fact that there was a stake in the middle of the driveway. When they originally had it surveyed, we it was my son's, actually his wedding weekend. We had parked a car up there because we had people from out of town that had parked in that driveway, and um, he couldn't get out because there was a stake in the middle of the driveway that they had marked the property lines. So we removed it so he could get out. Okay. So that's how we know when they marked the property line, it was dead center in the middle of that driveway. Because we had to remove a vehicle that we had to move that stake. Okay, so there's no photographs of that, of that stake? We didn't know what it was even for at that point. No, we didn't even know what they were doing. Okay. If I may add, Oakland County Property Gateway does show the property line um, splitting where a little bit, a slightly bit more is to the church's property, but it, it does split, the, split yes. the property. It splits the driveway? Correct. And yet the fence falls on the yeah. neighbor's side of the driveway? Correct. Correct. Now, the one thing I will say with property gateway and, and GIS in general is that that's not an official declaration. Right. If a, a professional survey is found 
to be in a different location, um, I can work with Oakland County to fix that. So I would say that that's not an official determination. It's just uh, something that uh, is a resource, I think, for, for the, uh, all those involved. I, I guess I'll just say to that, it, do, it does sound like uh, this fence was erected um, without permit and there may be issues with whether it encroaches on a property line or not. Um, I, I just have concerns about that. So, and did you have some uh, a comment, Elsie? Go ahead. Uh, what I say to you is that uh, this should be tabled until you guys can straighten out who's what. Is it is it correctly uh, uh, surveyed? Huh? Mm -hmm. If it's a service survey, <clears throat> also working with both of them to see can they work things out. And so if that's the problem with them that is in the driveway and they think it's this, so we need to have you guys to straighten all of that out before you bring it back to us. And I think, you know, that would solve the kind of solve the problem because we have issues here and we voted on voted on put giving them an offense, it's still gonna be issues between the church and the neighbors. And uh, you know, I don't I don't want that. Yeah. So staff typically does not get involved in private property matters. However, if you want to ask the applicant the same question, I think we'd be happy to at least facilitate a discussion. Um, because I think what's at hand here is if a fence is being put up on the neighboring property, there is a principal structure. So could everyone be happy with that? Possibly. But um, the issue in staff's interp interpretation, interpretation is putting a fence on the subject property of the applicants tonight. So I, I would, uh, Board Member Anderson, I'd ask the applicant if they'd be inclined to tabling if, if they uh, um, or want to proceed tonight. Uh, could, would you mind uh, tabling this tonight and get some of this stuff straightened out that they, they brought up? Um, is that there a chance that up? I, would it be problematic for me to have a brief, <clears throat> excuse me, recess with my clients? Yeah, go ahead. Before you do, can, just, can you hold on? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, could you hold on before you oh, speak yeah. with them? Just, oh, she's yeah. got something to say. Because I have question. a question because I do have a permit to get my fence built and I have a timeline. How is this going to affect my fence? Because I am enclosing my backyard and I have my materials on site. And we've been put on hold as far as building my fence until we find out what's happening with this fence because if this fence stays, I'm piggybacking my fence. Do you understand what I'm saying? So what are you saying? You're gonna put your fence alongside of this? To it would piggyback to where it goes and it would be attaching to their poles. Okay, so also, um, question for you, did you have a survey also? No. You didn't have a survey? No, and actually, when I had to amend my permit, because they put a fence up. So when Carla Cade, she didn't know about the fence. She didn't know they had a fence until I said, well, now I'm gonna be attaching to the fence next to my house, and she's like, what fence? She didn't even know they had a fence. I actually, I think, was the one that kind of brought it to her attention. So, yeah, because I had gone to get a permit and then had to tell them that I was going to attach it to that fence and not enclose, so, you know. Okay, okay, so a couple things. First of all, it sounds like everyone's okay with the concept of there being a fence along there. Along and, my and, backyard, and, yes. Uh, not your side yard? Not your no, it's only going up to the house. It's not going beyond my, into my front yard. Okay, so the, how much of that fence goes currently goes into your front yard, like 20 feet? What? About six to eight feet of six it. Six to eight feet. I mean, it's, it's quite a bit. I guess to make a long story short, it sounds like... It's quite a bit. Like, it, it goes all like the way you, to the driveway. It sounds like maybe you should try to... Folks should try to figure this all out yourselves because it sounds like you have a legal fence that may be able to go up. It's, I'm not, I mean, I'm this, putting up a privacy fence. I'm putting up a wood fence, so... But you're. I think that would make everybody happy. <laughs> so. In the back, you're not gonna. You didn't. You didn't want to piggyback off of this fence here. Okay. Yeah, to the going to the side of my house. So you want it on the side also. So reference it. And then it's ending at the house. So your problem is is that you're saying it's too long, too far out. Too far. Too way too far. Okay. Yeah, I I think 
tabling this and you are sitting down talking about it because they have did the property survey. You all haven't had the property survey. So you would think if they had the property survey that they're putting the fence on what it's supposed to be on because they had it surveyed. You know, and if you But that's in dispute. There's dispute on that yes. apparently. I mean so Okay. So please. So for, for us, it's problematic that the city would have information that that's in dispute, and we would not have had that prior to coming in today, because we certainly could have embraced that issue and modified it or corrected it prior to coming this evening. So that's problematic, particularly that the neutral source comes in with information or allegations that the fence is not on the property line. But you're, I agree. I, in fact, I'm a mediator by profession. But we sit down and we talk about these things and, and try to get them resolved. So I would like to again, uh, and I can say yeah. I was not aware of this okay. before tonight. And as you see, it's not in the no, uh, identified isn't. in the staff report. But it isn't. Yeah. Would you would you yeah. would you like to make a request to table? Then is that what you're saying? If I could just very briefly take three minutes. Okay. Sure. Okay. Sure. Thank you. If you if you don't mind, uh, do a formal motion just to a go into recess. Motion to recess. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, make, like to make a formal motion to head to recess. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 So, so you can go to recess and have your discussion and come back. Yeah. Um, and if it, it is tabled, we can still talk about it under communications or something. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay back in the record. And yes, uh, if you guys want to uh, just say what time we're going back into. We're, okay. Uh, yes. Uh, 725. Coming back out of recess at 725 p.m. Thank you for that opportunity to consult with uh, my clients. My clients are not opposed to. Um, a brief adjournment in an effort to try to get this matter resolved. Um, I, I just think that we would need some structure around how that may happen. 
um, as their representative. I am not opposed to speaking with the um, neighbors if they are not opposed to speaking with me. Okay, um, are, are you asking for a tabling or are you asking for an opportunity to speak while we still leave this issue open? And I guess both will table it from today and speak with it while the issue remains open. Speak to it while the issue remains open. Okay, and it sounds like maybe uh, that your neighbor is concerned about deadlines on her. Well, just to remind the board, so are we. But really, the applicant here is the church, and I definitely, you know, it's important to identify the neighbor's opinion on this. Um, but you know, there is a decision to be had on the fence, and but the question is, is there a resolution as well? So, so, so either the applicant can request a tabling, um, or we'll move move forward. It sounds like the applicant wants to request a tabling with structure, and I don't know what that would even look like. So. I would ask maybe what that is. Yeah, wh what is that structure that you're looking for? To well, if, if this board can schedule a date for us to come together again, number one, and number two, if we can receive a concession from the neighbors today that they are willing to um, meet with the representative prior to the next date, that would be fine. And I wonder if we would be able to um, reach a written agreement prior to coming back before this board. So I, I guess there's a question that's being put to you and if whether you're interested in meeting and discussing with the applicant or not. Trying to resolve the fence issue. And in my mind, that might include truncating the fence at your front of your property so that you don't, it doesn't extend beyond where your privacy fence is going to be. I mean, th these are things that you should, you know, could dis have discussed amongst each other prior to this. Um, it sounds like you both want a fence there. It sounds like you're gonna put up a fence there. Yeah, the only issue yeah, you're talking yeah. about is six feet of fence that's extending beyond the face of your home towards the, towards the road. So, and, well, and, and perhaps the location based on a survey, and that's up to you as to whether you wanna get a survey or you wanna make sure that their survey that they have is correct. I, again, this is all a discussion you could probably quickly have and resolve amongst yourselves. Um, Would it be inappropriate to ask then if the six, um, six feet of removal would satisfy the issue finally? Would removing the portion of fence that goes beyond the front of your house be satisfactory and so that you can build your house uh, or your uh, fence alongside that one? Yeah, that building in the driveway would be fine. That, in the I didn't hear a response, I'm sorry. Sounds like it may be appropriate to uh, meet outside of this forum. Yeah, yeah. Because who's to say that the church right, so. are causing it? I mean, I stay around the corner, and the, the mailman have tore up my side. I mean, my mailbox a hundred times. That little driveway. Yeah, what you want them to fill it up to do? Yeah, again, I think that would be something that could be resolved. It doesn't sound like in, a, in, a, in a, an elongated fashion, but, but could be in a pretty quickly uh, disposed of and then brought back with everything uh, in place and, and then we can move forward. There is a motion to table up on the on the projector. I just want to caution the regularly scheduled next meeting is June 29th, not May 15th, which is today. Yeah, so. Oh, June 29th. Okay. So again, folks, I'll say it sounds like you guys are very close to kind of resolving this whole thing yourselves. Can, uh, are, we, are we okay with the applicant providing a uh, uh, motion to table with the intent of 
you figuring it out amongst yourselves, and if you can't, come back in front of us. Well, again, the fence on the church property would be required a variance before you, so just keep that in mind. But there are some considerations for location and all that, which, uh, you know, yeah, perfect. Absolutely. 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 Well, Mr. Yandrick was very um, helpful in getting this meeting scheduled for today because June 29th would not be a good day. Um, is there a meeting between now and June 29th? What our ZBA meets the third Monday of every month. Unfortunately, the Juneteenth holiday precludes the normal meeting in June. Um, and with this case, you would want a full board here. We have not requested a quorum. Um, but I would ask that yes. to the ZBA, you know, if an alternative yeah. was there. <laughs> if not, July 17th is the, the next uh, regular scheduled yes. meeting. Oh, wow. Four. Okay. So it sounds like... <laughs> so I have a, a question for you. With the fence currently being on the property line, I believe is what was stated, where is, what's the location, like the setback requirement from the property line for a fence first? And then secondly, if the parties can agree to keep the fence, can it be on the property line so that neither side mm -hmm. gains or loses if they agree to a mutual? So the city doesn't t typically get involved when there's a property line dispute, but you are allowed to put the fence up to the property line. There's not a setback requirement. The only thing we ask is don't put the fence a foot away because, or a, a small enough distance that you're not able to maintain between the fences. So either abut them or put them far enough away that one or, or both property owners can clean that up through trimming and, and just removing other things from there. And just a question for the applicant. If the uh, the neighbor were to put up a fence, a privacy fence, would you see any need for your chain link fence to be there? And could it be removed since at this point it's not there legally with permit and within ordinance? Well, I'm not so certain that it's not there legally because that determination has not been made. Um, however... I guess I would have to speak with my clients. At this point, they've paid for the fence. Um, is there some remuneration that's going to be discussed with respect to the money that was spent to build the fence? I mean, they spent thousands of dollars to get this fence erected. And their position is that the fence is on the property line. Okay. And to, to date, we have not received anything. We've heard some accusations. We've not received anything to um, disprove that. Okay. So... Nor, guess, we, nor have we received anything to establish that, as I said before, that the fence is illegally erected. Right. Okay. Um, do we have a request to, to table this issue from the applicant? Well, we, we certainly are not opposed to tabling it, but not because we feel that there's any weakness in terms of the presentation that we've made. But in an effort to try to get it resolved, certainly we would be willing to um, have further discussions. So at this point, is it a motion to table presented to the board? Yep. Okay. And we have to have one of our board members present that motion? That is correct. Okay. If I need to make larger font for next month, please let me know. <laughs> so is there a motion on the board? What? Okay, so I move to the... Oh, am I mic on? I move to postpone the request variance from section 4.101A to allow for a fence without a primary structure at parcel ID 19-05261-008 and 19-05261-009 as until the ooh we until the regulatory schedule July, uh, June 26th. June 26th. Um, 2023 um, for the ZBA meeting. Well, I think we've indicated for the record that June 26th would not be palatable, and there was another, there was another date mentioned of July 17th, was it not? Yeah. So should that Correct. be on there? Um, are you okay with the 
amending your motion? I will amend my motion to July 17th, 17th 2023 um, for the ZBA meeting and hopefully both parties um, <coughs> can come to agreement when we come back then so we can keep it moving for both parties, okay? That would be fine. I just have one other comment to make. With respect to the way the motion reads, it says to allow a fence without a primary structure. I don't know that it's been established that a primary structure is necessary in this regard. And maybe that's something the um, board can continue to consider. And I guess I would like to add one thing because we have a current permit, we wanna yes. make sure the permit's not allowed to expire, expire for it. it you'll be good through that time frame okay, okay. Yeah. i just want to make sure you were we'll still continue doing this together yeah, probably another time. okay I'd, I'd like to second the motion is there is okay. there any um co any comment or questions on the motion first off uh see can you guys work it out and make sure that you let them know ma'am all the problems that you have if it's like this driveway the rocks it's right well, if it's something consolidated, if you guys could widen that so it don't, uh, if they can move a bush or two where they won't, somebody won't be hitting your wall or something like that, then talk to them about that. And I think you guys could work it out. You know, by the way, it's in the church covenant. You know what it says, too. Yeah, you know what the church covenant said, right? When you take communion as a thing in the circumstance, that resolve disputes quickly. You know, without delay. So hopefully yeah. you guys, I know you guys can work it out. It's just a couple yeah. of things in there that uh, you guys need to do and concern about it right. and stuff. So um, I mean, they're not hard to work with. I know a lot. So I All think right, you we guys got a, We got a motion uh, from uh, Kirk and Dolph and a uh, support from McClellan. Uh, roll call, please. Yes. McClellan. Yes. Bueno. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Motion passes. Motion passes. Thanks, folks. Thank, Thank you, you all. All right. Next item on the agenda is public comment. We will open general public comment. Is there anyone who would like to make a general public comment? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Next item on the agenda is miscellaneous. Do we have any miscellaneous? Anyone on the board with a miscellaneous comment, question? All right. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. We should be paid for what we do. <laughs> okay. From yeah. a social worker, property manager, mother. Yeah, that was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I think you wore all <laughs> those hats today. <laughs> uh, people in the council and No. All right, next item on the agenda is uh, staff communications, and uh, I'm just going to be very brief. The next meeting is June 26th, as we've discussed, and then um, after this, uh, we've got uh, training with, uh, we've got a representative from the Kelly firm and a representative from Carlisle Wardman, and, actually the founder of Carlisle Wardman and Associates. Um, we're very excited to have this, this training is open to the public, but it's not going to be on video, and it'll be in the adjacent um, conference room. Uh, we'll probably start a couple minutes after this uh, gets, we're in uh, uh, adjournment from this meeting. Okay. So. okay. Oh, we might, we might. So. I, I have not eaten dinner. Okay. <laughs> so in, in order to do training, we, we do uh, formally adjourn the meeting? And the, correct. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, all those who... Uh, Agree, say aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Well, you get our check next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you. I'm going to have to go the back way around because I always want to go. Okay. Okay. Okay.
But I need to read it myself because yeah. words, punctuation, they matter. This is this is getting too much. Uh, I know it was gonna be this tough, huh? Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, I'm glad you you handled it right. <laughs> 